ever heard of the Grand Canyon or seen pictures of it? It's massive. It's breathtaking. And it looks like some giant sculptor carved it out with care. But here's the twist. No machines and no artists were involved. Just nature's very own sculpting tools. Wind, water and a lot of time. And the processes they used? Two slow but powerful processes, weathering and erosion. Sounds unbelievable, right? It won't in a moment. Because today, we are zooming in the behind the scenes of Earth's biggest sculptures. Starting off with weathering. Now, just to be clear, I'm not talking about the weather. Like if it happens to be sunny or cold or foggy outside your window right now. I'm talking about weathering, the process in which big solid rocks are broken down into smaller pieces. And there are two types of weathering that we'll talk about, physical weathering and chemical weathering. Physical weathering can take place in three ways. In the first one, the sun heats up the rock during the day, which causes it to expand. Then at night, it cools, which leads the rock to contract. In the first one, the sun heats up the rock during the day, which causes it to expand. Then at night, it cools down which leads it to contract. These expansions and contractions build stress, which causes cracks in the rock. Over time, the constant expansion and contraction leads the rock to break into smaller chunks. The second kind of physical weathering is due to roots of plants. Tiny roots from nearby plants sneak into cracks and start growing. As they grow, the cracks widen further and over time the rock breaks open. Finally, at times, water collects within small cracks in rocks. This water freezes and expands, causing the crack to widen. When the ice thaws and contracts, the water seeps deeper into the cracks and freezes again. This repeated expansion and contraction causes the rocks to break apart. That was about physical weathering. Moving on, let's talk about chemical weathering. You see, sometimes rocks change from the inside out. Take basalt, a black rock. If it sits in water or humid air for a long time, it turns reddish brown. This is because iron in basalt changes to form iron oxide. This is chemical weathering, where water or air causes a chemical change in the rock's makeup. You can think of it like this. Weathering breaks up rocks and makes a mess. And what does erosion do? Erosion basically sweeps them away and thus helps clean the mess. Great. Moving on. Where does all the eroded stuff go? You see, as the speed of water or wind decreases, the eroded stuff settles on riverbeds, at the bottom of lakes or even in oceans. And we call them sediments. And these sediments harden over time and become new rocks. However, it takes thousands of years for sediments to turn into rocks. I know what you are thinking. You must be thinking that rocks break down and then they get carried away just to be made into rocks again. Yes, you are absolutely right. It's like nature's own recycling system. Slow but very impressive. So what did we learn? Rocks break down over time due to weathering by temperature changes, plant roots, water and even chemical reactions. 
These pieces are then moved around by erosion, thanks to wind, water and gravity. And over time, they settle down, pile up and form new rocks. All of this without making a sound and over thousands of years. So next time you see a small pebble or a grand, grand canyon, don't forget to appreciate Earth's silent sculptors at work.